So I did a video on the best-selling Japanese songs for every year, the 90s, and it was actually a pretty diverse mix. There's some good songs, some bad songs, and some songs where I think the entire country of Japan had a simultaneous mental breakdown. So my logic was originally, why not do that but for the 2010s? And then I remembered that in the 2010s, AKB48 broke the Oricon charts so hard that they had to make a new chart specifically to stop them. So we're doing the 2000s instead. Starting off with two thousand the number one song is tsunami by southern all-stars and this is immediately a massive one it won the japan record award basically the award for like best song of the year in 2000 and is the fourth highest selling song in oricon history it sold 1.36 million copies in a week and i don't like it this is a really boring ballad track so i assumed as i do with these sleepy ballads that the lyricism has to be great or something here i googled an english translation because i don't speak japanese and it seems to just be like a normal heartbreak song i have absolutely no idea what the lyricism is or what it could be doing to stop this track from putting every listener of it to sleep i feel like i've heard this exact same song 400 times but better from pretty much every other j-pop artist ever like his singing is good but that can only carry this tired instrumental so far the song is boring i can only imagine this sold well for karaoke but i think doing this would put the whole room to sleep so i'm not sure how well it would work the b-side is torianze which while not part particularly good is far more musically interesting. It's a super weird b-side, but if nothing else, it's one that's able to hold your attention. There's plenty about this song that doesn't work, but it's really fun to hear them try some stuff after the boring a-side. It's definitely the better song here. For 2001, it's Can You Keep a Secret by the legend Hikaru Utada, an artist I really like and respect. And you know what? This song is awesome. I was really scared at first by the boring first verse, but then the song does a jump scare drop into an incredible chorus. The rest of the song is just variations of that chorus, but it's so good. The production's really something special here too. It's electro pop, and yet it's so bright and full of life. Every part of this is on point, and this is a contender for the best number one song I've heard so far, including my last video on the topic. The B side is Ketobase, which is pretty much just the A side, but worse. It's got that same electronic instrumental, but it isn't as good. Also, the melody isn't as good, and the singing isn't as good either. It's just an overall downgrade from Can You Keep a Secret. It's totally fine in a vacuum, but it pales in comparison to the first song. For 2002, it's a weird one. It's H by Ayumi Hamasaki, and I feel like this should be disqualified on the basis that it's an EP and not a single. This should not be on the singles charts. This is a full EP that's just a teaser to her next album. Of course, more people are buying this than a single. The first song is called Independent, and I'm not sure how I do this, because while I think it's only five minutes on the single, the default Spotify version of this is nine minutes long. I think it's because they accidentally uploaded the next song as part of it. I'm not sure what happened. Either way, it's far, far more adventurous than I would expect a number one Oricon song to be. Contrary to the two we've seen so far, this is a fast-paced and upbeat rock song, and it shreds. This instrumental is crazy, and again, not at all what I would have expected out of a million-selling hit single. I'm not as familiar with Ayumi Hamasaki as I'd like to be, but everyone says she's a great singer, and yeah, I totally see that. She goes fucking crazy here. I know I just said he Karu Utada was the best one, but this is a contender too. Anyways, the second song is July 1st, and it's a weird song. It's half soft acoustic and half electropop banger, but those two sides don't mesh together at all. The chorus and verses are completely dissonant and feel like they're from two completely different songs. The chorus is decent, but I can't get over how smashed together this sounds. I'm just not big on it. And finally, the third song is Hanabi. This is a pretty boring ballad song. It's the not electronic bits from July 1st, but stripped of anything remotely interesting. I don't know why I've seen this online as an EP and not just a single for independence. That's what this feels like. It's the only good song here. <laughs> this is just a weird release in general. I feel like it really shouldn't count. Anyways, for 2003, we have an actual single. It's Sakai ni Hitotsu Dake no Hana by the boy band SMAP. I'm gonna assume that's some kind of abbreviation, but I think it's funnier if I just call them SMAP. This is the third highest selling Japanese single of all time, and I have never heard of them before. This is another generic ballad track, but it's saved by having not bad production. The singing doesn't do much, but the more folksy instrumental keeps the energy up, even in the face of the middling melody. There's an instrumental horn melody here that's much better than the actual singing one for some reason. If this instrumental was any worse, it would be unlistenably boring, but I can totally tolerate this. Take note, Tsunami, this is how you do a ballad. The B-side, Boku Akimi o Surete Yuku, is another ballad, albeit one with less good production. I don't think the appeal of 
of this band is like actual musical value though there's three purposes for this one is having hot boys for teenage girls to drool over and they seem to have done that pretty well judging by the sales numbers two is to have those boys sing well and sure they do and three is to get people to sing these songs for karaoke and the melody is solid enough for that because of that while i don't necessarily like this song at all it fulfills its purpose it gets a bit of a pass it's a decent enough b-side for 2004 we get hitomi woto jite by ken hirai take everything i said about the last a side and you can apply it to this one too generic ballad track kept afloat by a decent instrumental although the smap one is just better this one does air more on the side of being boring though but it works just well enough i'm starting to realize that the only reason people are buying songs like this is the use for karaoke i can't see any other way that many people bought this cd the b-side is desperado a fully english piano ballad track often when it comes to these ballad tracks i try to be nice i often say something like oh maybe the lyricism's good and i'm just missing it maybe it's because i don't know japanese uh now that one of these is in english i can say that this completely sucks there is no point to this ever being recorded and released i guarantee you no one who bought this cd bought it because they were like man i really like desperado this is dumb for 2005 we have some weird lore it's seishun amigo by shuji to akira which is one of those made-up groups they did for a drama it's actually kazuya kamanashi and tomohisa yamashita the song is somehow even weirder than the lore here is it's a western song and i don't mean that in like western music like american pop i mean like country western i looked up what this drama is about and it seems to be a pretty normal high school rom-com thing so i have absolutely absolutely no idea why they went for a western movie vibe on this. The most surprising part might be that it's actually pretty decent. <laughs> Just having a western theme, or really a theme at all, automatically makes it more interesting than a lot of the songs I've been over. The melody and singing are both great here too to round out what is a surprisingly above average song. Unfortunately, B-Side Colorful is the ever prevalent ballad track, but some effort was put into the instrumental here so it's fine. The singing's pretty great again too. The C-Side is Kizuna, and and somehow this is the best version I can find of it on YouTube. I don't know what language that is. It's in 240p and it sounds like it was recorded by someone holding their 2010's disposable camera in front of a speaker. It's just colorful but worse. Worse melodies, instrumental, singing, quality on YouTube, everything. For 2006, it's actually the second straight appearance for Kazuya Kamenashi as his boy brand Katoon took the number one spot with their single Real Face. And this is bad. I'm pretty sure I found the actual version on YouTube in between the 12,000 covers of this song that show up, but it doesn't matter because no matter if it's the original or a cover, all the versions were varying degrees of shit. The rapping is sucky, the melody is anemic, the instrumental is overblown, and generic. The song generally sounds like shit. After I listened to this YouTube autoplayed Sparkle by Tatsuro Yamashita as if to mock me with actual good music. Unfortunately, I'm not reviewing that because that's a good song. I tried to listen to the B-side Gloria, but there's one problem. I cannot find it on YouTube. It's not there. All I see are a 30 second clip of a live performance, video of guys singing karaoke, and instrumentals for karaoke. I checked American Spotify. It's not there. I checked Japanese Spotify. It's not there either. I booted up Soulseek for this. It's not even there. There's another song on the single, Will Be Alright, and it's the same way. What kind of psyop is going on that this thing sold a million copies in 2006, and I cannot find a way to listen to this? That's wild. Did everyone who bought this just do an AKB48 and, like, immediately dump their copies on the side of a mountain afterwards? What happened here? Did everyone realize this song is actually terrible and not care about the rest of it? Mysteries of the World man. For 2007, we have a song I can actually listen to, at least, and that's Seno Kaze Ninate by Masafumi Akikawa. This one's a ballad track, but it's a bit unique in that instead of being some random J-pop boy band guy, it's an actual opera singer. The instrumental is more piano and strings, and let's be real, it's hard to get into songs like that when they're in a language you don't speak. However, this dude is a very powerful singer. If anyone is able to make one of these tracks work for me, it's this guy. He's fantastic. 
The lyrics of this are based on a pretty sad poem about death, and I can see why this sold a ton, because this singing is just incredible. The B-side is a cover of some other opera song, I think. The drop into an actual instrumental, like, halfway through is awesome, but it's still mostly carried by this guy just being a great, great singer. I do like this more than the A-side, though, mostly because of the actual solid instrumental in the second half of this song. And unfortunately, the boy bands make a return for 2008, as it's a double A-side, Truth and Kaze no Muko A by Arashi. There's also a third song here called Smile that they leave out of the title because I guess no one cares about it. Truth is a totally fine synth-pop song that lacks anything distinctive or really particularly interesting. It's a very sterile boy band number, and you've probably heard two other things that sound just like this from other boy bands. That's not to say it's bad. The production at least sounds like some good effort went into it. It's just generic. The other A side, Kaze no Muko A, is a far more interesting song to me. It is some funky tropical production and a really solid hook. It sounds way more fun and full of life than truth. My only problem is that for some reason, this really reminds me of Who Let the Dogs Out? Like, it's got that kind of half-wrapped start-stop flow for the verses, the tropical vibe, and the repeating hook-reliant chorus. Either way, this song is just really cool and way better than I was expecting after Truth. Smile, the last song, immediately gets bonus points for having Ska going on at times. That alone bumps this up for me. It's another light pop song, but this one lacks a lot of the energy of Kaze no Mukue. It's overly simple, it's not quite as sterile is truth, but it's kinda getting to that point. It doesn't really take any risks or do anything. For 2009, our last year, unfortunately, Arashi is back, to the point where they have four of the top five songs. This is why I can't do the 2010s for this series. Arashi and AKB48 ruined everything. It's another double A side too, Believe and Kumori no Chi Kaisei. There's also a C side here called Tobira. Believe feels like a collision between Truth and Kaze no Mukue, taking some of what worked and some of what didn't. The chorus and rap verse both feel akin to the latter song. While the chorus here is really strong, the rap verse here sounds like complete garbage. I think the verses and overall production here take a lot from Truth though, and it's worse off for it. If nothing else, it's still really fun and high energy and better than several other songs so far, even if it doesn't all work. Kumori no Kaisei once again succeeds on what seems to be Arashi's core musical strength. It's got a good chorus and a pretty great hook. Unfortunately, I'm not a fan of any other part of this song. I think the production is super cheesy, and I think it's got a lot of extra touches that are failing to mask what is extremely generic songwriting. It's got a ton of flash, but no actual substance to back that up at all. Finally, Tobira is another very high-energy dance pop song, this time taking a lot from disco. All of these Arashi songs feel like they're blending together, and I've only listened to six of them. I have pretty much the same thoughts on this as I do the last one. Production is super cheesy, and it's got a ton of flash with no actual substance. Although on this one, the hook and chorus aren't good, so it sucks. Here's a list of all the years right here, and here's my rankings. Can You Keep a Secret and Independent are my top two, just because those are the only songs from this video I've actually added to my playlist and I plan to like re-listen to a lot, because I really like them both. You get to the middle and it's like songs that I think were fine, but not particularly great, like Seishin Amigo's decent enough. 2008 is a fun B-side. 2007, that's just based on the pure singing performance alone. And then towards the end, you get a lot of, like, the ballad tracks I don't like. 2003 and 2004 were just, eh. 2006 has its own spot in the depths of the garbage bin. I'm, I can't even listen to half that single. I don't know what to tell you. And yeah, Tsunami was just painfully boring to listen to. Uh, there's my thoughts. If I ever do a 2010s version of this, it will probably be on April Fool's Day because I'd just be reviewing like 10 AKB48 songs and I think I would genuinely go insane. And really, let's just be glad I'm stopping at 2009 because the entire top 10 for 2010 is AKB48 and Arashi. And if you go to 2012, it's the same thing, plus their sister group, and it's the entire top 14. Idol elections are the greatest money-making scheme in music history, but that's a rant for another time. Anyways, thank you for watching. Uh, like, yeah, you know, you know what to do. Bye.